Hi there! Today, in this video, I'll be showing you how to construct a trade receivables control account. But first, this is a summary of the possible items that will appear in a trade receivable control account. Take note of the treatment. For instance, sales revenue, you actually have to debit the amount. Sales returns, you credit the amount. Discount allowed, you credit as well. Now, there's a reason behind this. For instance, because this is a trade receivable account, it is an asset, so any debit amounts will increase the asset account. Any credit amounts will reduce the trade receivable control account. So let's go straight into the question and see how we can apply this. So here, whenever you see a question like this, always take note of the question requirements. In this case, you will see that you are being asked to prepare the trade receivables control account and a trade payables control account. Whenever you see the word account, it means that you are to prepare ledger account. And in this case, the question is testing you on the topic of control accounts, since this is what is mentioned in the requirements. The way to tackle this kind of question is to look at the entire list given down here. So what happens is this. On the 1st of August, questions will typically give you these two amounts. Um, and this will actually be your balance brought down. for your trade receivables control account. We're just going to tackle part A first in this video. Next, look through down the list and identify the items that will actually be included into the trade receivables control account. For instance, any source documents that is being issued that will actually go into our trade receivables control account because we only issue source documents. because we will issue source documents only to our customers. So if you look at the first one, invoices issued, this will actually go into our trade receivables control account. Now, we can't write particulars as invoices issued because that is not a proper account name. So we need to translate all these words into a proper account name. And in this case, we issue invoices because we, could, we sold inventory to our customers. So now our customers will be owing us more, therefore we will actually be adding this amount into the trade receivables control account and we will write this as sales revenue. Right? Always have at the back of your mind what could the account possibly be. So next we have invoices received. Now this one will go into our trade payables control account because we will only receive source documents from our suppliers. We never issue source documents to suppliers. So this, we will actually use it for part B. So later on, we will use this. Cash sales. Now, questions like to trick you, especially in this topic. So any transactions uh, that's related to cash transactions, you will actually ignore it. This amount will not appear in either A or B. Next, debit note issued, definitely one of it as well. And you need to understand what a debit note does. It's different from a credit note. So debit note will tell a customer to pay more since previously we undercharged them. Like they were supposed to pay us 10,000, but instead they only paid 1,000. So we issue them a debit note. So in this case, we will actually convert these wordings into a proper account name, which is your sales revenue. It cannot be sales returns because they didn't return us anything that will cause them to pay lesser but we want them to pay us more so sales revenue is the correct account name so next one we have so we're going to add this amount of 570 next one we have credit note receipt this is for part b receipts from credit customer this will actually be included the keyword for credit customer is a giveaway sign that this is related to our trade receivables. Now, what is a proper account name and what does it mean by receipts? Now, receipts refer to the receiving of money from our credit customers. So, take it this way. Our credit customer previously bought from us some goods on credit basis and now they pay us out. 
And when they pay us up, it means that they owe us lesser right now. So we actually have to minus this amount and selecting the proper account name, it will be Cash App Bank. So we will actually write Cash App Bank here. So this is just short forms because um, we're going to write the proper ones in the ledger account itself. Next one we have check payment to credit suppliers. Suppliers here is a giveaway. It will be for part B. Writing off of trade receivables. Trade receivables matches in this part A, trade receivables control account. So this will likely go into our trade receivables control account. And the keyword writing off means that this person or this customer actually went bankrupt. So we will only be able to use allowance by payment of trade receivables. So this will be the particulars when we write later on. So in this case, we are actually going to minus away since our customers have gone bankrupt and it will be reduced and taken away from our asset account. Next, offsetting. Now offsetting appears on both trade receivable control and trade receivable or, and trade payable control accounts. So this will actually appear in both and for both accounts, it will actually be a minus effect. So the particulars in this case will be trade payable control and we will credit the amount. So now we're going to prepare the ledger account itself, the trade receivables control account. So once again, since we're preparing our ledger account, we need to prepare the correct format. And the format is as such. You will write notice that we don't write any customer names here because this is a control account and control accounts are actually a total trade receivable account so it's a sum of all the customers and therefore we don't have any one specific customer written down here and take note this is a ledger account so you need to have all those three columns so here we go the format is done we are now going to include all the items that we have identified so the first one is actually your total trade receivables here up here so it's going to be a balance brought down the date here will be your august 1st since it is the first day of the month and it's also mentioned in the question on august 1st so whatever month it is it will be the first day of the month so this is like the opening balance so we need to write it as such how do we know that it is a debit balance now always take note of your accounting rules if it is an asset it is definitely a debit balance so it's a plus minus kind of account so it's good that you if you actually write down make it a habit to indicate whether it's plus minus or minus plus all right now the next line of entry will actually be your invoices issued which we have identified as sales revenue so we will write this particulars as sales revenue and we will debit the amount 9870 and in this case any transactions after the 1st of August we will write it as the last day of the month so August 31st and next, we have the next transaction, your debit note issued. We will actually write sales revenue and we'll also debit 570. Then, next, we have your receipts from credit customer. This one we will write as cash at bank. And this time around, we will actually minus away the amount 
because our customer owe us lesser since they have paid us up. Alright, now next one we have check or rather write off of trade receivables. That's all because customers who really go bankrupt, so we're gonna minus away this amount to 80. And the particulars will be allowance for impairment. If you recall on previous chapters, we have this long account and we only write this down when the customer goes bankrupt. Next one, offsetting between the sales and purchases ledger, we will actually minus 690 since the function of offset is actually also known as a contra entry is to reduce both accounts. Here we will write the partner's name as trade payable control account. Don't just write trade payables but also write trade payable control. Because if you just write trade payable then you must have a customer's um, a supplier's name attached to it. But for control it is actually the entire or the summative trade payables that you have. Okay now once you're done that's not the end because this is an asset account and it will have a closure of a balance brought down. So if you have calculated the amounts, you will actually get this balance. It's good practice if you actually write down the middle intermediate um, balances, but for Cambridge purposes, the beginning and the ending balances are the compulsory ones. So here you go. This is how you prepare a trade pay, a trade receivables control account.